Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times. It's Monday, June the 8th, and here's news from Arkansas today. Governor Asa Hutchinson announced that he is acting on advice from a task force he appointed and has decided, and Johnny Key, the state education director, goes along, of course, that the state will drop using the so-called PARC test as a measure of student sufficiency and meeting new curriculum standards known as the Common Core. Now, he was quick to add this doesn't mean that he's made a decision on keeping the Common Core curriculum. That remains under study, but the test they're going to switch to, the ACT test, is designed exactly to be a measurement of the Common Core curriculum. So it, it seems like we're not really moving away from that yet. That means there's undoubtedly a little more fighting to be done. I think there are a couple of interesting angles on this. This PARC test was administered only once this year. It had its critics. It was mostly done online. That was thought to be a problem. There are other people that question how it was designed. All that may be true. But next year we're going to have school report cards and the State Board of Education will consider whether schools should be taken over by the state or whether they're passing or failing on their reports based on their scores on these test scores. Uh, we've lost a year in short in, in gauging how our schools are doing it seems to me. The U.S. Supreme Court today issued rulings, neither of the big ones that are everybody's waiting for on same-sex marriage and Obamacare came out today. There was sort of an interesting ruling that should be of interest to people who are interested in gun control. The Supreme Court today declined with only two justices, Thomas and Scalia, dissenting to take up an appeal of a Ninth Circuit decision that said it was okay for San Francisco to pass some gun control ordinances, one of which was against so-called cop killer kinds of bullets. So yes, you can put restrictions on guns under the Second Amendment. Even the U.S. Supreme Court with a decidedly conservative bent thinks you can, just in case there are those who might disagree. Interesting thing popped up over the weekend. Senator Jason Rapert, no friend of gay people, just blew a gasket on Facebook over the weekend because of the 12th annual Conway Pride Parade. This is a group that's gotten together for 12 years, always on Sunday, and had a march the champions brotherhood and brotherly love, very Christian values you might think, not to Jason Rapert. The point of the parade is to not discriminate against gay people. Jason Rapert was furious that on Sunday, the Lord's Day, people would parade in support of loving all people, even LGBT people. He thinks the city of Conway, in fact, should outlaw such parades on Sunday. Now, there is a First Amendment that guarantees a right to assembly and free speech. And by the way, nobody said anything bad about religion or churches or Jason Rapert. One sign did say that Jason Rapert didn't speak for them. But beyond that, most of the intimidating and shouting and bullying was coming from Jason Rapert. It's gotten national attention gone viral again. Jason Rayford has a knack for that. I suspect he uh, feels that he's pretty safe with his constituents on that, but the world is changing. A lot of people are willing to live and let live. They are willing to live by those tenets in the, in the good book, the so-called Great Commandment, about loving everybody, even people that are a little bit different than you are. Diversity was also on the agenda in Mountain Home, a very conservative region of Arkansas, the Arkansas State University Gay Straight Alliance held a diversity ball Saturday night and included performances by drag queens and drag kings. Quite a sight in Mountain Home. They had a big turnout uh, of young and old. It was a very successful event. It was interesting because Mountain Home was going to give us a candidate for Arkansas Supreme Court next year, Sean Womack. He's somebody who ran for state senate successfully by saying he would make it a crime to do homosexual acts again in Arkansas. He also tried to pass a law to prevent gay people from adopting children. This was something that a later Arkansas Supreme Court said was unconstitutional. Is he the kind of guy we're going to elect to the state Supreme Court next year? What did he think about the diversity ball? Not very much pleasant, I would guess. Elsewhere, Dennis Milligan remains in the news as state treasurer. The American Cancer Society says no, it won't take any money from Dennis Milligan to try and settle accounts on the fact that one of its employees did campaign for Dennis Milligan while they were working for the nonprofit, nonpartisan American Cancer Society last year. Uh, there's going to be a court case perhaps this week about an employee that Milligan fired who says that Milligan's done terrible things to him. And finally, an FOI request from critics of Milligan, within the Republican Party, by the way, have now totted up that so far Dennis Milligan's actions as circuit clerk in Saline County have cost taxpayers more than $360,000 in legal fees and settlements of lawsuits. Not exactly a guy who's going to bring a new efficiency to state government, I don't think. Interesting topic on the blog over the weekend. Uh, the city board in Little Rock tomorrow is going to hear a proposed ordinance that would require future hires as Little Rock policemen to live in the city. It's sponsored by Irma Hendricks. I don't think it's going to go very far. Probably won't get many seconds of approval from anybody, but it's a good topic to talk about. The fact that a lot of police live outside the city 
can be seen as something of a commentary on the city that they're hired to protect and serve as a place they don't want their own families to live. It's a good conversation, one we, one we ought to have, and we ought to look at it on a racial basis as well. Finally, uh, Hugh McDonald, the CEO of Energy Arkansas, says he's going to retire in 2016, and there'll be somebody else to succeed him as head of the state's biggest electricity company. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.